Doctrine and Devotion is sponsored by our friends at Media Gradier. Media Gradier is a small nonprofit ministry that makes amazing documentaries and multimedia Bible studies. This week, we want to tell you about the Behold Your God podcast, featuring co hosts Dr. John Snyder, pastor of Christ Church New Albany, and he's the author and host of the Behold Your God study series, and Matthew Robinson, director of Media Gradier. You looking for another solid podcast? This is it. Stay tuned for more details or head on over to themeansofgrace.org. Welcome to Doctor in Devotion, a podcast exploring Christian faith and practice from a Reformed Baptist perspective. My name is Joe Thorne. I'm the lead pastor of Redeemer Fellowship in St. Charles, Illinois. And I'm Jimmy Fowler, executive pastor at Redeemer Fellowship. You are back. Look for now, at you. yeah, I'm Look back. Look at you. Mm-hmm. I'm so excited. You were are gone you, for so long. Were you Were you really excited? It, it, it felt like you lashed out while I was away. No, man, I didn't lash out. Yeah, I was you just, did. What do you thought? I, yeah, went, you I, did. I was nice. I didn't say anything bad about you. No, no, I, didn't I mean, make you funny. cut your beard. You, you know, you, that you, is not lashing out, Jimmy. Yeah, that no, no, that's. It's that's a, a cry mor- for help. It's mourning. That's cr- I was in mourning. Cry for help. You, you people. Yeah, and people then we are- had one text exchange to mm-hmm. which you snipped at me. No, and I just stopped snipping. Oh, do you want to? Do you want to talk about it? Then we can talk about it. Okay. Here, I was a friend looking for a friend to vent to, and you just say, "What's this got to do with me?" No. First of all, I got it right here. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. 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 Uh, you came. It sounded like you were coming at me. No. It didn't sound like you no, were no, venting. No, no, it's no. Not, I was venting. I was venting. But there's no way to know. Okay. So something happened. Uh, while Jimmy was gone, had nothing to do with me, and uh, so, which you made abundantly clear. Yeah, because you were coming me? at me, so like I was you not start, coming at you. you mean, that's how it, that's how it sounded. No, 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 it did not sound like that. Yeah, absolutely, it had nothing to do and, with you. And you're like, oh, yeah, it'd be really nice if like this stuff didn't fall on me. And I'm like, yeah, I agree. I don't know why you're yelling at me about it. Wasn't you know? yelling at you. Was asking you know having yep. a friend, but, looking for my fr- a friend yeah. to have my back. Once you said, I'm just venting, then I'm like, okay, that's fine. Yeah, no, I just stopped yeah. after that. I said, yeah. Forget yeah. it. I'll no, because you were yelling at me. Doesn't matter yeah yeah it doesn't matter no that's so cool appreciate it though mm-hmm. yeah and it was like such a not a big deal too you're overreacting on top of it you were no. supposed to relax and yeah. you couldn't relax because of a small thing it wasn't a small thing. it was a small it thing. was not a small according thing. to everybody that was involved it was a small according, thing. yeah you don't even know you weren't even part of it i was part of it how were you a part of it you just got to, done saying talk, had nothing to do with me i talked to the parties involved after the fact oh oh mm-hmm. did you did you who'd you mm-hmm. talk to don't worry about it yeah see no one mm-hmm. I, no. I did i did no one you know you're so full of do not make me Make you link what? up with another podcast host. Don't make me do it. Because, like, listen, there's I can, some out there. I can find trying- another Jimmy. You can find another Joe. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> especially since there's a podcast that's trying to be exactly like us right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Hey, you know what? <laughs> it's like, hey, nope. maybe I could like that podcast because I do it. <laughs> I uh, the more the merrier, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, that's what we say. <laughs> the more the merrier. Man. So, man, what did you do while I was away? Hey, how did it go at that uh, the the conference you were speaking at? Oh, Pastor Godwin's church, Faith Church in uh, M- M- Millville, Mil- Milford. I don't know Milford? what it is. Yeah, Milford, yeah, yeah. Ohio, and um, a great church, uh, great people. Men's uh, retreat was awesome, and uh, got to meet uh, you know Pastor Ryan. Yeah. And uh, who's who's relatively new there, not even a year yet. Um, and as soon as I got there, in fact, here's the thing. I walked into the men's retreat and the first dude to introduce himself busted my chops. Oh, there you go. He walks up. He's like, hey, Joe, good to see you again, man. It's been a while. How you doing? And I usually that would get me. Mm-hmm. But I, 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 I my, my spidey sense was tingling. And I was like. No. And he goes, no, I tried to get you. I don't know. Man. And I'm like, that, but I'm like, now I love you though, because yeah, yeah. like you are awesome. And then this other guy comes up to me, uh, the major part of the church there. And he's like, Hey, uh, I was told that I need to meet you because you and I would get along really well. And I said, you must be a jerk. And he goes, I am. I go, yeah, all right. You know? <laughs> the guys were great. They were very attentive. It was super mm-hmm. generational. So we had like young teens all the way up to grandpas at the yep, men's yep. retreat. Awesome stuff. Yeah, great church. Uh, yeah, I, I loved it. I loved it. I want to go back sometime and um, just hang out. It'd be yeah, good. Nice. Yeah. So I did that. Uh, I've been sick. Uh, so I'm entering third week. It's finally tapering off. So, you know, this. I, I just can't survive without you, Jimmy. I think, oh, that's, is what that what I, I think that's what I've learned. Well, now, you're going to need to learn to because. I know you're yeah. ready to get I got some more trips planned. Of course you do. You always do. I leave and next not, week. And if they're not planned, they're going to be planned very soon. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. So where are you going week? next week? Atlanta. 
Yeah, that's just like two days or something. No, well, no, three, four days. Yeah. yeah. Atlanta, and then I got to go back. I got to go to the UK. Mm. Either December, either sometime in December or January. Why don't you send Homeboy in your place? No, not sending Homeboy. Send, send Homeboy. No, I'm not. Homeboy can handle it. No, he cannot. He handled business while you were gone. Uh, no, no, no. Oh, yeah, he did. Oh, no, he did not. Oh, he Stop did. It. He told me, he told me, he's like, I, I got this. Mm. I can I can totally do Jimmy's job now. Mm. Oh, is that what he said? <laughs> well, I don't know if he exactly said that. <laughs> is that what he said? You know? <laughs> is, that, is that what he said? Uh, you can ask I'm, Homeboy later. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to follow up right now. <laughs> Hey, tell me about that. Uh, find the, out if he's still in the office. <laughs> tell me what was like the, the I, knew, I saw a lot of pictures. Yep. A lot of pictures of you picking up your wife, which is awkward. Don't pick up your wife. I didn't pick her oh, up. I, you definitely, I, I saw There's the pictures. one photo. Uh, uh, at least one. But I, I, think, I think I saw like eight. But the point is, um, when you were in Europe, mm-hmm. what is the most standout? Like this was the most fun this is the thing I enjoyed the most. Not you as a couple, mm. you as my fofo. What did you enjoy the most? What did I en- enjoy the most? One of the standout experiences. Oh, oh, like an actual experience. Well, it could be anything. I don't care. No, no. I, I really, well, first and foremost, I enjoyed sauntering. Oh, just walking around. There's no saunter, better place to saunter than exactly. Europe. I just sauntered. Which was great. You know what? You know why? That, that's that's how Hitler just got in there because he just sauntered he just in. Sauntered yeah, through. Like, he just oh, sauntered. Guy's sauntering. <laughs> <laughs> no, I enjoyed uh, quite a few things. Uh, in Italy, we did a, a cooking class. Oh, I saw that. Class. Yeah, uh, yeah. You looked very intense when you were I, making that pasta. I was quite nervous. I failed. <laughs> I failed to even make the dough. But it looked good in the picture. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She yeah. had to fix the dough. Yeah. And she literally, like, as I'm doing it, and it's not working, and it's going all wrong, she utters, under her breath, tragedia. Oh. And I was like, I caught her saying I'm like, what did you, what did you say to me? But and she just started laughing and chuckling nervously. Mm. But yeah. No, that was fun, because Michelle really liked that. Uh, honestly, I probably the best part was just walking around the... Old like villages in mm. France. That's cool. We would just go drive up, park, and I would just mm-hmm. just walk around it. Dig it. Loved it. Dig it. Well, listen, I don't want to make anybody jealous that's here locally, but I just want to thank you uh, publicly here, Jimmy, for the four gifts that you brought me from uh, You're Europe. You're such so a jerk. I, what, I just, I'm I not saying what they are. I specifically asked you I, not to say I'm that. I'm not saying what they are. I just thought you, you brought me these gifts. And, uh, I you know, hate you so much. It's not like it's so 10. No, people need to get jealous. <laughs> four is pretty good. So, why, why would you do that? I'm just very grateful. Why would you do I'm that? I'm very grateful. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Especially because for other people, I didn't get any. Yeah, because I people need to know the pecking order of just friendship. Give, just give me one of them. No, just give me one of the bags. No, the guy, let me go no give I, I'll write my name in it first. Yeah, <laughs> to my best friend Joe, <laughs> and then I'll give it back to you. You can you can give that one to somebody. Give that one away. All right, we got to get into it. All right, what are we talking about today? We're going to be talking about church covenants. Uh oh, are we ready to do this? I'm How both. do we lock people in? And never let them go. You know what? We are the Hotel California we, of churches. <laughs> Hotel California <laughs> yeah. of church covenants. That's right. That's right. You could check in we anytime check you want, out. but you can't. You can never leave. So. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Well, there's 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 always. Well, not always. I, I think for the past ten years, there's been quite a bit of talk about church covenants, both good and bad. Yeah. Um, and we have a church covenant. Most Baptist churches have a church covenant. Um, so we thought we would get into this and attempt to bring some clarity to the issue, right? To see what people, hopefully to encourage people to think um, about church covenants in a biblical way and and in practical ways as well. Um, And also to recognize that there are potential problems with church covenants. And so we'll, uh, we'll, why don't we start with, with what it is, Jimmy, when we're talking the church covenant, obviously there's the church confession or statement of faith. That's what we believe. What is a church covenant? Yeah. I mean, at the simplest way of saying is it's a promise made to God in a local church. Right. Yeah, that's good. That's good. It's just, it's the oath, the, the, the covenant, the mm-hmm. promise that a group of people the make. contract. Yeah. That like we agree yep. to do this and it's, that is promised to God and yep. towards God and then toward one towards another. Towards each other. Yep. So these are the two basic things. <coughs> yeah, this Ooh, still cough. getting yeah, over still, it. Still, still there. You got your water? I do. I got my water. I got my water too. Yeah, but I also have my cigar in my other hand. <laughs> Same. I wasn't going to do a cigar because, you know, I was coughing last week too. Yeah, well, I was coughing the last two weeks nonstop and I smoked the whole time. Oh, there you go. Well, don't, it seems to be helping. Don't care. Well, you know what? Everybody else said it's going to take three weeks to get rid of. And I said, well, I'm not passing on cigars for three weeks. So you couldn't just set aside for, for three weeks. I could, but I'm not dumb enough to do that. You're not dumb enough. No, because I, like, what if I were to die in week two? That would be, I want to enjoy. <laughs> you want to enjoy cigars the, in the intermediate week? state, Jimmy. Oh, really? No. Oh, no, okay. not until the not to the eternal state mm. when the new earth and we can have the perfect tobacco blends. Mm. Anyway, 
<laughs> um, the one so, the, promise between God and one another. Yeah, and so like a lot of people are like church covenants aren't biblical. Okay, well, church covenants aren't biblical if by that you mean that the the, the Bible doesn't specifically command yeah. Christians to establish a church covenant like we do, but. A church covenant is a way of doing a biblical thing. We talk yeah. about this in terms of membership, right? Yep. It's a way of doing a biblical thing. So maybe membership, the way that we talk about it, isn't commanded in Scripture. But what Scripture does command is uh, is encompassed in what we call membership. And the same goes for a church covenant. There's a book out there called Baptist Church Covenants by Charles DeWeese. 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 I'm DeWeese. DeWeese. That's, That's we're going. the best yeah. one. DeWeese. Baptist Church Covenants by C. D. Weezy. C. D. Weezy. He says this: A church covenant is a series of written pledges based on the Bible, which church members voluntarily make to God and to one another regarding their basic moral and spiritual commitments and the practice of their faith. Mm. Very good definition. Very good. And, book and who's, for who's going to disagree with that? Like, who's going to disagree that those are good things to have in one's life? Okay, they're not, but they might say, "Well, I listen. I don't need a man-made covenant." For me to do to fulfill my moral and spiritual commitments. No, but you need uh, that accountability to do those things. That's what I would say too. Yeah, but uh, but some people they don't want that. Yeah, they, some people are just arrogant and want or, to go about things all on their own. Or some people have been burned really bad. Yeah, yeah, by yeah. some but jacked up mainly truth. arrogant and ignorant and insubordinate. Oh, goodness. churlish. Oh. <laughs> Now you know the reference. Yep, now I know. <laughs> All right, so Jimmy, um, how far back do these I, this idea of a church covenant go? Yeah, I mean, well, we see these things. We see church covenants early on in church history. William Barton in Congregational Creeds and Covenants quotes Henry Barrage commenting on the proto-church covenants in the early Christian era. Now, I'm going to go ahead and read this. Is that okay if I read this? Yeah. I know your throat's hurting, so I don't want to... Yeah, the less talking I do, the better. It, well, Unfortunately, the more talking you do, the worse. So exactly, I, we're, we're, I know. That's a you know. either or here. So, all right. He says, Yet though the church covenant idea, as it is known to us, does not seem definite... Dang it. Ah. <laughs> does not seem definitely to appear in the New Testament. And though the term covenant employed in relation to a Christian church is evidently of comparatively late date, it is interesting to note that in Asia Minor, very early in the Christian era... Namely, during the reign of Emperor Trajan, uh, there were Christians who seemed to have made use of an idea practically equivalent to, though earlier and therefore naturally more informal than, the church covenant idea of later times. Mm. This fact is clearly manifested in the well-known letter of Pliny the Younger to the Emperor Trajan, in which he says, quote, that they, which is the Christians of that time in Pliny's domain, bound themselves by an oath at their meetings, not to be guilty of theft or robbery or adultery or the violation of the of their word or pledge. End quote. Mm. This oath resembles the earliest church covenants of later times, though of course the term covenant was not used. Yeah. So they really formally developed in the Protestant Reformation, particularly among the uh, the separatist mm. and independent churches in the 17th century. Right. So that's really. People don't generally talk about the covenants until the Reformation, right? Mm -hmm. That's um, that's because you know the, especially among the independents, where there was a clear separation of church and state and all of that, uh, you know, out of that Puritan era, uh, people had to clarify like, so where are our authority yeah. and author and, um, uh, and our protection and what holds us accountable? Yeah, um, they had to they had to figure out a lot of their ecclesiology and, and polity and how to make the Jesus flag. Uh, yeah, I don't know how old the Jesus flag is. We should look that up. Yeah, Pliny the Younger talks uh, about it. I don't it. think so. No, no, no you're he making does. that up. No, no, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So, um, but I like that, you know, that quote that you read from Congregational Creeds and Covenants. Like, we do see it. We do see yeah. this concept of people uh, pledging an oath to one another and to God. Hey, we're we're in this together. Yeah. We're committing ourselves, formally committing ourselves to the Lord and to each other as a local church. Now, <coughs> Uh, D. Weezy, D. Weezy. Um, also goes on to say this about the Baptists coming out in the um, 17th century with their covenants. He says, Baptists worldwide, 
Baptists worldwide have written and used hundreds and perhaps thousands of church covenants since initiating that development in England in the early 1600s. They had viewed covenants, along with believers' baptism and church discipline, as means of nurturing and safeguarding the New Testament emphasis on a regenerate church membership. Covenants deserve careful evaluation yeah. because they help shape Baptist church membership standards and practices. So really, and you look at like John Smith and like the super early Baptists coming out of the Reformation to the uh, particular Baptists, which we would call Reform Baptists now, to the General Baptists, you could look, all of them made use of covenants. They pretty yeah. much across the board, they all did it. And they did it because in establishing these new churches that were independent, they wanted to clarify what they were all about. Yeah. And what we believe and how we're going to act and how we're going to interact with each other and the world around us. Right, right, right. So there are a couple of, I mean, just a, you sh it would be good. I, it would be a good idea if you got some time and you're thinking about this sort of stuff. Just Google church covenants, right? And you could, I would say maybe like uh, modern church covenants or popular church covenants. Look out there. I mean, Rick Warren's is a famous one, and mm -hmm. it's actually from Saddleback Church. It's actually a good church covenant. It's basic, it's simple, and it actually serves as the basis of our church covenant here at Redeemer. That's right. Mm. That's right. Mm. We're using Saddlebacks. Yeah. What's up, everybody? We ain't afraid Saddlebacks to say it. Saddlebacks is our jam. Yeah. Well, he's Rick the Rick Warren is his mentor. Yeah. Stop it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rick Ward and Ed Stetzer, no. co-mentoring no. Joe Rick, Thorne. Yeah, Rick Astley is more my mentor, okay, than Rick Warren. <laughs> Let me just clarify. Come on now, you've got, listen, it's it's okay. Don't be, you got Stetzer, uh, uh. you got Warren, mm -hmm. and you got Askell. Yeah, Come on, yeah. you got you, them all. You, you forgot McDonald. Oh, and McDonald, yeah, yeah. I forgot about McDonald. Yeah. None of these guys are my, it's just not going to, people are going to be confused. Listen. Um, let me, let's just go through a couple of, we'll, we'll, we've chosen two. All right. Church covenants that go back to the 19th century. Jimmy, you want to read one? Mm -hmm. Sure. I'll read the first one. Uh, this is uh, the treatise of church discipline by Samuel Jones. <clears throat> we whose names are unwritten, underwritten, being desirous to be constituted a church of Jesus Christ in this place and having all due knowledge of one another in point of a work of grace on our hearts, religious principles, and moral, co moral characters, and being desirous of enjoying the privileges that appertain to the people of God in a church relation, do, in the name of the Lord Jesus, voluntarily and freely give ourselves up to the Lord and to one another, according to his word, to be one body under one head, jointly to exist and act by the bands and the rules of the gospel, and do promise and engage to do all things by divine assistance in our different capacities and relations that the Lord has commanded us and requires of us, particularly to deny ourselves, take up our cross, follow Christ, keep the faith, assemble ourselves together, love the brethren, submit one to another in the Lord, care for one another, bear one another's burdens, endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace, and finally, to honor, obey, and maintain them that, may have the rule over us in the Lord. That is one long sentence. Well, yeah. Okay, that was one. All right. Yeah. So they did not commit themselves to like, punctual, you know, adding sentences. Well, full John stops. Owen wrote in long, Apostle Paul wrote in long sentences. All right, so that, that was sentence one. I'm going to continue. This is the covenant we obey and maintain them that may have the rule over us. Okay, I, I missed the line. Here you go. Here's the second sentence. This is the covenant we solemnly enter into, into the fear of God, humbly imploring the divine assistance and blessing that we may be built up and established to the glory of God, the advancement of the Redeemer's interest, and the comfort and edification of our own souls through the infinite riches of free grace, which is in Jesus Christ our Lord. And now, to the only wise God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be worship, honor, power, glory, dominion, and obedience rendered now and evermore. Amen. So two sentences. All right. So yeah, two sentences makes it short. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's, it's a good church covenant, and mm -hmm. I like it. There's a lot of things I like about this. Two things that stood out to me as you were reading it that I really enjoyed. One is that um, when you're reading, your finger runs along the lines I hate you. of <laughs> because I messed up. I messed up <laughs> the one time. Your finger is running along I, the screen. I messed up the one time and went up like a line. <laughs> so, yes, yes it's I funny. had to. Whenever Jamie reads to himself, his lips move. So it's not that. Stop that big it! Of a Don't deal. tell people these things now. Um, and the other thing was that I like seriously was like they they acknowledge we are making this covenant together. Yeah. And it is we who have seen in each other a work of God's grace. Yes. Like we 
we've evaluated each other. Yes. We've assessed each other as Baptists. We yep. receive people into our membership collectively. And so I really like that. And this is a good, it's healthy. Obviously, we would write it differently, but mm-hmm. I don't have a problem with anything that is said here. No. Um, I think it's really well done. It's it, it's it meets the criteria that we think is important for a covenant, meaning that it is it doesn't say too much, doesn't go into super specific no, details, no. but it is a good, broad, and powerful statement about what we should be about as Christians. Yep, for All sure. Right. Now, what about the what about the one by uh, John Newton Brown? Um, all right, so John Newton Brown wrote uh, the Baptist Church Manual. So if you are Baptist, grew up Baptist, have any familiarity with Baptist churches, uh, you've probably seen some of his stuff because his uh, covenant that he wrote in the Baptist Church Manual is the most popular Baptist church covenant in existence. It is Mm. used by tons. A lot of Southern Baptists used it. And it's been modified, of course, by many, but uh, this is it. So listen to this one. And as you're listening to it, and we'll, we will reprint these in the show notes. Yeah. You can actually read them. But as you're listening, listen to how this one differs from the other in one particular spot. Yeah, good luck. Having been led, as we believe, by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we do now in the presence of God, angels, and this assembly most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge, in holiness, in comfort, to promote its prosperity and spirituality, to sustain its worship, ordinance, discipline, and doctrines, to contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry, the expense of the church, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel through all nations. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotions, to religiously educate our children, and to seek salvation of a hundred Oh, I missed the line. I pulled the Jimmy. Mm, yeah. yeah so you saw that I was seeing that you had your finger there and you moved your hand. I, I didn't yeah, my you finger did. anywhere. You moved your hand. No, no, no. I was you doing something on the screen. Hand. It was you, something on the you screen. You moved your hand so I wouldn't see <laughs> no. it. And then you lost your place. No. There was an ash on oh, my yeah. cigar. Oh, sure, sure. All right. The, <laughs> all right. So, um, all right. Contribute the expenses of the church. Maintain family uh, relief, relief of the poor and the spread of the gospel through all nations. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotions to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be just in our dealings, faithful in our engagements, and exemplary in our deportment, to avoid all tattling, backbiting, and excessive anger, to abstain from the sale and use of intoxicating drinks as a beverage and to be zealous in our efforts to advance the kingdom of our Savior. Boy, they kind of snuck that thing in there, didn't they? Yeah, they did, right? The it's last like second. all this Bible stuff, and then it's like... <laughs> <laughs> and then they just pull it right out of the temperance movement. Yeah, and just like ab- a good Baptist. To abstain from the sale. Nobody's going to pay attention. In the middle, they're going to tune out. <laughs> and Joe's finger's going to drift off the line, and he's not going to see this part. Uh, to be zealous in the efforts to advance the kingdom of our Savior. Mm-hmm. We further uh, engage to watch over one another in brotherly love, to remember each other in prayer, to aid each other in sickness and distress, to cultivate Christian sympathy in feeling and courtesy in speech, to be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation. It's a good line. That's a great line. And mindful of the rules of our Savior to secure it without delay. We moreover engage that when we remove from this place, we will, as soon as possible, unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. Bam. By and large. These are great. Pretty good stuff, but boy, they snuck that in there, didn't they? Oh, yeah. They snuck in a statement that is neither. I think it also said not to dance. (laughs) <laughs> well, it might as well have. If it's going to start inventing laws uh, for Christians to follow, they, uh, they 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 should they should just list them out and enumerate them. Now, these are like two historic examples yeah. of church covenant. We're not getting into the modern ones because um, that's really not the point. We want you guys to understand that that church covenants have been a part of Baptist life yeah. from the beginning and a part of the the broader uh, Christian church uh, from the early days of of the New Testament uh, church after the apostles. Yeah. So it's really important to know, like there are resources out there as, mm-hmm. as you're researching and looking for these covenants to see that these are, these are based on scripture. It's biblical. It's, it's there for, uh, for your help. It's there for your edification as is 
the media gradier uh behold your god podcast that's mm. right that's right media gradier is uh sponsoring our podcast for the month and so we've been telling you about all their documentaries and their yep. bible studies and everything but today we're telling you about their podcast Behold Your God. It's co-hosted by Dr. John Snyder, pastor of Christ Church, New Albany, and Matthew Robinson, director of Media Gradier. Now, each week, they discuss subjects that are dealt with by the various projects Media Gradier produces. What so, are some examples of that? Well, uh, they did a series on the 18th century Welsh Calvinistic Methodist minister Thomas Charles uh, and a discourse that he gave concerning sinful pride. Mm. They did a series on letters written by John Newton on the growth of grace in the soul. They did a series on letters to a soul-seeking Christ by Robert Murray McChain, as well as they have like the occasional interviews with men like Sinclair Ferguson. Mm. We like him. Uh, Jeffrey Johnson. Yep. Don't know him. Men from the Banner of Truth, of Love course. Them. Reformation Heritage Books and more. I mean, All good stuff. This is... We we like a good podcast. Yeah. That's why we do such a good one ourselves. Exactly. Yeah. Now, so we hear ourselves week to week. You know, on loop. Uh, on loop. That's on all loop. we listen to. Loop. By the way, mm. the sponsor won't mind. Mm. Uh, you know who listens to my pod- our podcast every day? Whoa. Freudian slip no, there. I huh? just, because he's my son. Killian. Oh. Killian. Killian listens to Little us. Little Killian. Every night I go, his room, he's playing our podcast when he goes to sleep. Killian is the best. Killian's awesome. I love you, Bonger. Mm-hmm. I That's, love you. Yeah. You are the best. You feel bad now. Yes, Busting I Busting his do. chops like you do all the time. I do. I did not think he'd be listening. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bonger, can I, did I ever tell you how smart your child is? N- you know what? He is probably the brightest of all of our kids. Uh, he so, is, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, you know, if if all of my kids are 20, lot, 20 watt bulbs, you know, he wants to be that bright, <laughs> to be brighter. <laughs> See, okay, you could say that, ah, you know, but listen, there's over a year's worth of rich theological and historical material in mm-hmm. their archive for this yeah. podcast. So yeah. if you're a listener of Dr. Devotion, you're going to dig uh, the Behold Your God podcast at themeansofgrace.org, or you can subscribe to them on YouTube or wherever you listen to your podcast. So get going you know, on that. Do us a favor, like for real, bring it up on your, uh, even while you're listening right now, if you're on your phone, bring bring up your, your little podcast player. Search for Behold Your God Podcast and subscribe. Just do it now, and this will do a couple things. One, it'll let them know, hey, we're paid attention. We're not skipping through the ad. Mm, how about that? But more mm. importantly, I want you guys to give it a shot because it's actually a great podcast. All right. All right so Jimmy. getting back getting mm. back here to Church Covenant, Let's Joe. do it. So uh, there's a lot of – I shouldn't say there's a lot of static, but I, I come across individuals yeah. that – Blogs. Blogs. Mm. Uh, but I'm thinking of individuals specifically that uh, that don't think that – Church covenants are useful, biblical, necessary. I mean, should churches then be using church covenants? And to be fair, it would be good as you're exploring this. Hop on to the Google and type in, should we use church covenants? Hmm. And you will find people uh, on various blogs articulating why they think it's a bad idea. And they'll give you examples of how this has gone wrong. So there is a debate now. Obviously, Reformed Baptist Church, we're going to be pro-church covenant, so we're going to say yes. But I would say it like this. Um, Should you use a church covenant as a church? I'm going to say yes if the church covenant is biblical, simple, and used for the gracious promotion of unity in the church. That's really important. Those three things have got to be there. Because if if it's not biblical, simple, and used for the gracious promotion of unity in your church, uh, you're likely to do some harm. And it's easy for churches to do harm. We've all been harmed by churches, and we've probably done harm as churches. So when we're talking about biblical, we're talking about that that it helps to clarify the essential Christian conduct Mm -hmm. uh, of God's people people gathered uh, together as one. Yeah. And it's it's not necessarily calling for adherence to extra biblical laws or commands, right? Yes, yes. So just like we were looking at um, at, at the previous yeah. uh, Homeboys. confession, uh, John Newton Brown, uh, these things have to be biblical, meaning they're, they really are derived from Scripture. Like they, you, you look at the pledge that was yeah. made uh, from the early church that we read or the, or the earlier covenant that we read. Biblical, is it reflecting and pointing back to what we, uh, where, where we find our, what is our authority and where we find God's truth? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think it's to say biblical, to clarify a central Christian conduct um, in opposition to muddying the waters by promoting non-biblical or extra-biblical ideas and commands. So some common ones, no uh, drinking. No drinking, not, no beards. No beards, yep. So. <laughs> why, why, why is that funny? Uh, I haven't seen that in a, conf- in a covenant, but I bet there is one. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I've had, you know, uh, 
non-formal covenant so not, requirements. Yeah, yeah, so it wasn't in the covenant. No, it wasn't. But it was an expectation, unwritten rule. It was an unwritten rule. Mm-hmm. Mm. Unclarified covenant. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, no dancing. That, no, that's yep. baiting into a lot of them. Yep. No movies. No, like no theaters. Yep. No, no theater. T- 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 what, uh, what else? What do you think? No smoking? No tobacco oh, products? Oh, yeah, for sure. That You know that that was in there. So there's, the point is, and we're not saying that, I guess here's my No problem. jeans for women? Yeah, right. Now, depending on the genes, that might be okay. Um, so I remember when John Pi- – if I'm remembering this correctly. Ooh. Oh, I, I, I could, hope you're I, not. I could be wrong. Oh, I hope you are. But I'm pretty sure – Ooh, Barnabas, fact check this. That, that John Piper led his church to remove from their church covenant the statement that called for a, a refusal to use beverage alcohol. So basically, it was in there. We're not going to drink. We're not going to promote it. Uh, And he took it out. Actually, I think I've heard that. Now, he maintained that I don't think Christians should drink. I really think, by and large, we should put it away. Yeah. yeah. But it doesn't belong in the covenant because the scripture doesn't compel that. And secondly, we're going to have that in there, but not like no abortions. Hmm. (laughs) <laughs> like, like, really? Yeah. Like, there's a lot that you could, there's a lot that you could say. Yeah, there's you, a lot that should be then if you're going to say yeah, this. You know? You're going to get real specific about something very, like, a, that's a peccadillo. Uh, that's a little tiny thing. Mm-hmm. And it's not even real. Uh, so, like, you want to put something in there like that. Well, we're not going to do this. But then you're not going to make a statement about the murder of innocent children in the womb. Mm. 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 It's a little weird, right? It is. So, I like that. I like that Piper got that. So, he was like, let's just make this as biblical as possible. But biblical isn't the only thing. We think it also needs to be simple, which means not overly detailed. Yeah. Right? Because the covenant itself is not the authority. Scripture is the authority. And it can't cover everything. It's really just supposed to be a uh, a general commitment to God and to one another that appeals to the whole of Scripture. So, the covenant draws you back to the Scripture where you find all of the expectations. This is why I actually like Saddleback's church covenant because it issues some very standard big picture biblical commands Mm -hmm. that wind up encompassing quite a bit you know and it's uh, um you know for example to to love and forgive one another if you were to have a statement like that well that's it's pretty big and it would cover a whole lot of things yeah um so i think that's that's good Uh, definitely biblical definitely simple and it's got to definitely be it's got to be gracious right uh when we're talking about the gracious promotion of the unity Mm -hmm. in the church so it's not used to control people oftentimes i shouldn't say often the the some of the dangers when it comes to church covenants yeah. is that it's used as, as, as a means of controlling God's people. Yeah. Yeah. It's, Binding their conscience or making sure that they can't leave. They yeah. can't leave. You're here. You must, you must give, you must do this. You must do that. And so it's used to kind of uh, put a strangle on God's people instead of uniting God's people in godly purposes. Yeah. That's really good, man, because we've seen it. I've, I've, I've we've seen it in every tribe I've been a part of. And I tend to like my tribes. Mm-hmm. Um, I've seen it outside of the tribe. I've seen it um, all over where, it's, it's, in other words, there's no one denomination that I know of or group that has gotten, a, uh, who's gotten away with maintaining church covenants yeah. and not have a screw up that hurt somebody along the way. Yeah, for sure. And so yeah, it, it, if, you're, if, if your idea is, oh, I'm going to, we're going to use covenants so that we can control people or we're going to use covenants so that, that we can hold people accountable without getting in trouble. It's merely a, a legal document. Then I think you're approaching this thing in, a, in the wrong way. Yeah. So Joe, you said when we asked, when I asked about like, should, should churches be using these church covenants? Uh, you kind of said yes, but then you also kind of lean towards no. I don't lean towards no. I lean towards yes, but I would say it. I'm you, sorry. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. I should have phrased that. You said yes, but you, there was kind of a little bit of a hedge. A there is a, there is a no if your church covenant is unbiblical or convoluted or used for the authoritarian control of your members. Mm. So if you, in other words, I'm 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 pro gun. Okay, that's you know big shocker. Right? Yeah, um, I'm I'm pro gun, but uh, I I think it's a really good idea that if somebody is going to own guns, that they should be very well trained in uh, manipulating the gun and using mm-hmm. the gun. Um, they they should be very competent with it yeah, yeah. And, and and it should be a good gun, uh, well-maintained. Uh, if, if, if you're just out there starting up a church, just kind of doing your own thing, uh, without accountability, without mentoring, without, you know, with good oversight and you're, and you're like, oh, I'm just going to, I'm going to use covenants and I'm just going to kind of create it myself and go my own way. Uh, you're, you're getting into dangerous territory yeah. because you're likely to screw this up. And that's oftentimes how these unbiblical convoluted or controlling documents are made because 
they're not really connected to history. They're not they're not seen as as a healthy part of relational Christianity. Mm-hmm. They're merely seen as a tool. It's like the stick, right? It's like uh, I'll keep you in line with this stick called the Church Covenant. Yeah. Now with this, like, should churches use covenants? I'm. I think we say yes. Yeah. With yeah. some caveats, like you know, obviously. What about Christians? Should Christians? Should be obvious what we're going to say in general. Yeah. Should Christians join a church with a covenant? Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, you okay, Joe? Yeah, no, I have another lung. It's fine. Oh, you're fine. You have another lung. <laughs> you got one more, so you're good. Oh. Yeah, absolutely. I, I 100% uh, believe that an individual, uh, like I would, I, people should be joining a church with a covenant. But I'm going to say there's there's still a bit of apprehension, depending on... on be, be thoughtful, be careful. You want, right? Exactly. Be thoughtful, be careful. I think you want to ask questions, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you want to clarify what the conditions are that allow people to leave a church oh, or yeah. dissolve membership, right? People... Yeah, churches... Some, some churches will oh. try to lock you in. They, it's like they're, You know what? They're like a gym membership. They're like... No. They're like a cable contract. Oh, that's even worse. Yeah. 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 I, I think like... I knew, I knew a pastor... Um, you know what? He he had some issues. Whatever. There was a family in the church, beloved, been there for decades, and they were like, you know what? We're gonna we're gonna go somewhere else. Mm. And he's like, what are you, what are you talking about? And they're like, we just you know what? We don't feel like this home anymore, so yeah. we're gonna go somewhere else. And he was like, well, you don't have a biblical reason to leave. And they're like, yeah, we we're not vibing on your leadership. Yeah, the way you do things, we're gonna go somewhere else. And he's like, that's not biblical. You can't leave. We're not going to, I'm not going to let you, I'm not going to grant you your letter of transfer and it, trying to hold them hostage. So that sounds like uh, something's going on. Something's going on. What's happening? I don't know. Well, so, so yeah, you want to clarify those conditions. You want to clarify what church discipline looks like and how it's been practiced at that church, right? Yeah. Because churches Ask should that. be, you know, uh, utilizing church discipline where appropriate and where necessary. And so you want to see, okay, how is it, how has it been used? How has it been uh, transpired here at the church? Uh, you want to sit down and talk with the leaders and members, right? You want to get to see, okay, what's, what's going on here? How's it handling? Uh, and overall, do some Google research. Find out about the church. This is true with any church that you're joining, any mm-hmm. church you're looking to get into. But you definitely, um, when it comes to a covenant, you should do some some research, some investigation, because uh, people have done some bad things with church covenants, right? Yeah. Not every church is healthy, and not uh, and not even if they're in, even if they're on the right website mm-hmm. for your if they're on your team, uh, it doesn't mean that they're not going to to screw up. So I think that. It, it, it is wise for people to talk openly about how you guys handle controversial issues that relate to membership, uh, leaving and church discipline. We cover this in our orientation class. Yeah. We go into it, you know, pretty deep because we want people to know exactly how we operate and how we, and, and how we don't. And so, uh, by the way, Jimmy, if somebody wants to leave the church, what do you think? Well, if somebody says, Hey, we're just gonna, we're going to go somewhere else. Yeah, I mean, I think if if they want to go and they're in good standing, it's not a, an issue of church discipline. Then yes, they should be able to go. Yeah. Obviously, uh, we we had a family this year say, "Hey, you know what? We love you guys. Yep, we love the leadership. Uh, everything's good." But obviously, not everything's good because they said, "But for a while now, we haven't been feeling like like this is the right church for us." Yeah, and so we're going to look for a church, hopefully something closer to our home. And so we just said, "Well, we love you. We hate to see you leave, yeah. but you know, um, goodness, well." We'll help you find a church if yeah, you want to yeah, look, and yeah. it's all good. And so, yeah, li- li- if people don't want to be at your church, man, you gotta you should let them go. Yeah, like what? <laughs> people get super, super defensive and protective and insecure, and it's a bad, it's a bad look. So, yeah, church covenants, we like them. Um, maybe you guys could share on the social media mm. uh, a link to your church covenant, or. If you've seen a really bad one, you can link to that thing and show us uh, show us some of that stuff. Jimmy, how do they engage with us on online? Well, we'd love to hear your thoughts. You can follow us online on Instagram and Twitter at Doc and Devo or on Facebook slash Doctrine and Devotion. You can head to the website, DoctrineVotion.com. There you can contact us. You can sign up for the email blast or hit up the store, JoeFoStore.com, and grab some gear. Fresh Pot every Monday and Thursday. Blog posts on Wednesdays. Later. Later.